scouring is probably the number one problem really that calf raise has, isn't it, Karen? And, and how do you actually deal with that when you have a scour? If the calf's looking sad or showing signs of scouring, it's working out whether it's nutritional or a, a, a viral infectious agent. Calves suffering from an infectious scour can be contagious and may need medication, whereas a calf suffering from a nutritional scour may only need additional hydration and will not affect the other calves. So it's really important to identify what scour you are dealing with. When we're taking a temperature, um, it's obviously easier when they're drinking, but if it's a sick calf, it would be probably standing quite yeah. miserable. <laughs> right, it's, just, it's beeping now, so yeah. we've and it stopped flashing, and it's at 38 degrees, so that's normal for a calf. So you're pretty happy with that? Yeah, pretty happy. It's a healthy looking calf. The normal range is from 38 to 30, 39.5, yeah. and um, and it's any, if it's any higher than that, then it's an infectious agent, and if it's lower, you know, is the calf cold or is there something else, like, like yeah. pneumonia or something yeah. like that. Something else could be happening. Yeah. Hygiene's the big thing, like for us, um, we're just a moving bug, so people are the carriers of a bug, so we, um, we don't want the dairy staff coming into the sheds, um, other people coming into the sheds are potentially bringing bugs, so the calf rearers themselves, um, while we're having no problems, they still wash down their clothing and change their gloves. As soon as there's any sign of illness or anything happening, then we really knuckle down. So the big secret is to, to stop it from even happening in the, in the first place through feeding, you know, feeding your colostrum and then on to um, making sure that all your basics are done well and you're keeping everything as hygienic as we possibly can. So what about actually treating calves with um, antibiotics if you do have a problem on the rise? How do you go about that? Um, so if we do, if we're going to treat one, um, always have a clean syringe and a, a new needle and a nice sharp needle. And it's just a matter of, um, some of them are subcontainous, so they're under the skin and others are intramuscular. So in, on a calf or a cow or any animal, you have a, a triangle of area that is the golden area for injecting. Yeah. Um, and so, and if you're doing under the skin, you can go under the skin at just behind the here, yeah. where there's a good lot of skin, or in the neck. Okay. So um, it's just a matter of making sure the calf is contained um, and held firmly and make the whole procedure as kind as you possibly can for them there. And when do you decide when to actually treat a calf with an antibiotic? Uh, as soon as there's a high temperature, so, and, and it's just working out with years of experience, it's like, right, this one this one might need endomycin, this one might need a white penicillin, so, so but that's where it, you need to have veterinary input, especially if you're not confident with it. Yeah, to help you make the decision, which is a definite option. Yeah. Yeah. And as long as, when you do um, run a course of antibiotic, it's just like you and me, you have to run that whole course. So, you know, if it's three days treatment, it's three days treatment on the same time each day. Yeah. Rakaia Island use neckties as a way to easily identify sick calves or slow drinking calves. This means the calf rearers know exactly which calves need some extra attention at feeding time. So coccidiosis is quite a debilitating disease for calves, uh, obviously a parasitic infection. Mm. How do you sort of combat that here at Rakaia Island? So for us, we, we actually put Bovitec straight into the milk. Right, yeah. So it's, um, we're very careful, we put in like, quite a low amount so that, um, that nobody ends up poisoning the cows or yeah. making them drunk. And um but it, we we need to just purely on our numbers. Yeah. yeah. And what about are there any other ways that you get a cock video set into the car? Uh, through your pellets of course. So when you do get those odd cases of coccidiosis um, come up, what do you actually do to combat that? So we use um bacon. And that's a sort of a one-off do dose that we can give them. So I guess you use the coccidiostat to prevent coccidiosis, but if you have uh, an infection arise for whatever reason, using something like a coccidiostat can really help you knock it on the head. Totally, yeah. yeah.